Let's think about the Harlem Renaissance of the Roaring Twenties. We know the names in music, Duke Ellington and Bessie Smith. In business, Marcus Garvey and Madam C.J. Walker come to mind. But what of some of those areas we now call STEM? Who was bold enough to explore the field of aviation in this historic neighborhood of Manhattan, New York? Hubert F. Julian's colorful and flashy demeanor led the charge of black aviators in Harlem and as far as Africa during this time frame. Welcome to the Melanated Wings Collection, presented by Better Endeavors, LLC. This week's episode, Volume 1, Episode 7, characterizing the life and career of Hubert F. Julian, a.k.a. the Black Eagle of Harlem. Hubert F. Julian was born September 21, 1897, in the island nation of Trinidad. Julian was an only child to his father Henry and mother Sylvina, Lily. His father was a cocoa plantation manager in Toko. It was in 1913 when Hubert first saw Frank Boland perform an exhibition flight. The young man was impressed by the charismatic pilot. He then set his sights to become an aviator. In 1914, Hubert moved to Canada to finish his studies due to the outbreak of World War I. There, he learned to be a pilot and obtained his license at age 19. Julian was also an inventor. He created a device called the Parcha to Gravepur, Assistra. This device was to be initiated by the pilot if a plane developed any issues. Once activated by a switch, a horizontal blade would blow open a huge ribbed umbrella capable of slowing a plane's emergency descent to 20 feet per second. He received patent number 1,379,264 from the U.S. Patent Office of the Aeroplane Safety Appliance in May 1921 after moving to New York. This patent was sold to a Canadian aircraft company to assist with his move to New York. In Harlem, Julian was greatly influenced by the culture of the time. He established the image of the gentleman flyer with a snazzy wardrobe and with a bold personality. Hubert began his aviation career as a parachutist with his first jump at the Long Island Air Show in 1922. He became the apprentice of Clarence Chamberlain, who previously crossed the Atlantic Ocean. After Julian's third jump with Chamberlain, which nearly resulted in disaster, he was a household name in the streets of Harlem. This included plans to parachute over Manhattan and land at a vacant lot between 139th and 140th Streets and 7th and 8th Avenues. The crowds gathered to such a large size, they were mistaken for riots. Hubert was even taken to court by the city of New York where Hubert had fortunately applied for a permit before the jump, allowing his case to be dismissed. However, the city ordered Julian not to jump over the city borough of Manhattan ever again. Julian commenced a flying tour from Atlantic City to Detroit, assuming the alias of Lieutenant Hubert F. Julian, MD, mechanical designer. This garnered the attention of Harlem legends such as Marcus Garvey. Hubert not only became a member of Garvey's Universal Negro Improvement Association, but he also became an officer in its Parliamentary African Legion. After a failed parachute jump in Harlem due to high winds in 1924, Julian announced the aspiring project to be the first man to make a solo flight to Africa. He routed his venture from New York to Florida to South America and then across the Atlantic Ocean to Ethiopia. However, Hubert received very little support, even from the NAACP. His solicitation was believed to be a fraud looking to scam people even receiving a warning from the U.S. Post Office to cease sending out letters for donations. Ever determined, Julian attempted his flight from Harlem in his aircraft named Ethiopia One on July 4, 1925. This ended in the terrible failure of crashing into Flushing Bay in Queens. However, this effort was enough for the U.S. Post Office to close their fraud investigation and allow him to continue sending letters for support. It was not until 1930, during the Great Depression, where he was approached by a representative of the Ethiopian prince Rastafari, Makonan. Here, he was offered the opportunity to move to the African nation to train recruits of its air force to perform at the emperor's coronation. Upon arrival, the country's air force was found to be very disappointing, consisting of two German planes and a French pre-World War I aircraft. There were only two trained pilots in the force, to provide the much-needed assistance, Julian attempted to fly back to America 
to recruit black Americans with flying experience. However, the plane he used failed and crashed. Since this was one third of the nation's air force, he was thrown out of the country by the emperor. Hubert spent the next year flying bootleg whiskey in America from Canada. He officially obtained his flying license, number 21,512, from the Department of Commerce on July 20th, 1931. He moreover performed in William J. Powell's all-black air show, Black Wings, which was covered in last week's episode on December 6th, 1931. Hubert volunteered in the Italo-Ethiopian War to assist Ethiopia in 1935. He was even granted citizenship to the African nation due to his great efforts to assist the nation during this time. However, after an altercation with Chicago aviator John C. Robinson, the Brown Corridor, he was removed from command in the Air Corps. He soon resigned and left for France in 1936. Once Italy won the war, Julian stated he was now an Italian citizen by default, even renaming himself to Huberto Giuliano. This was an elaborate ruse in a failed attempt to infiltrate Rome and assassinate Benito Mussolini. By summer 1939, Hubert was an accredited foreign correspondent for the New York Amsterdam, the local black newspaper. He would send dispatches from France until the outbreak of World War II. He then challenged the Nazi air marshal Hermann Göring to an air duel over the English Channel via his manifesto Mein Kampf in response to Hitler's insults on the black race. He attempted to fight in the war via the Royal Canadian Air Force and the U.S. Army with no success. On the other hand, he once again obtained his U.S. citizenship and worked for Ford Motors Willow Run Aircraft Plant near Detroit. Post-World War II, Hubert valiantly started his own airline, Black Eagle Airlines Limited, which charted international freight flights and owned aircraft plants across Europe. Julian also started Black Eagle Enterprises Limited to supply arms and material to client nations before returning to America to settle down. Hubert lived the remainder of his life in Harlem, passing away on February 19, 1983. He is currently buried in Calverton National Cemetery on Long Island. From the events and accomplishments described in the video, can you imagine the confidence and swagger of such a character? Are you impressed with this individual? Leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. Our next aviator has an impressive story as well. This intellectual was one of the first black engineers in the aviation field and designed the WR series aircraft. Neil V. Loving's story will be showcased in next week's episode. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell to receive notifications of next episode's premiere, along with others to come during our first volume. Feel free to visit our website listed in the description below to learn more about our Volume 1 Chronicles. As always, have an uplifting day and stay up!